For more on the terror attacks in Iran, let me turn to Negar Mortazavi, an Iranian journalist and commentator. Negar, what do you make of the target, a military parade in Ahvaz? I'm assuming that was the target. Um, exactly. It was a military parade. And let's also be sure um, to mention that this wasn't just an IRGC parade. This is all uh, branches of the Iranian armed forces, which include many young people who are serving a mandatory service in the army. Um, so not everyone who is there is necessarily volunteering. Uh, to be there. And also, there's always spectators in these kind of parades. As you said, there are civilians, there are women and children, and we've seen them among some of the injured and um, even deaths. We're still waiting for the final death. What election. do you make of the claims of responsibility? An anti-government Arab group by the name of Ahvaz National Resistance, and then also claims of responsibility by ISIL. Right. Both groups have independently claimed responsibility. The government officials have said that they have killed a few of the attackers. There's also reports of a few suspects being arrested. Eyewitnesses also have reported that they saw some people being arrested. We still, I guess, have to wait and see if these two groups have done a coordinated attack or they're taking uh, responsibility for the same attack independently. But what's clear is that this was in the province of Khuzestan Ahwaz, which is an Arab Sunni minority uh, majority. And there's also a lot of poverty and um, inequality, and there's a lot of uh, basically opposition to the government. But there's also these certain groups that take up arms and do armed resistance against the governments, which is also um, condemned by some of the civil groups. So there's even different factions within the anti-government that are existing. In Let's put up a tweet by Iran's uh, foreign minister Javad Zarif. I'm going to read this out to you: Terrorists recruited, trained, armed and paid by a foreign regime have attacked Ahvaz, children, journalists among casualties. And he goes on to talk about the, what happened in Ahvaz. But what does he mean by terrorists recruited, trained, armed, and paid by a foreign regime? Who is he talking about here? Well, there seems to be indirect references, or maybe even direct references, as we listen to other Iranian officials, to some of the Arab Gulf countries. Um, that have in the past uh, came out to support some of these groups, these Arab um, separatist groups or some of the anti-government. But let's also mention um, President Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton. Just last year, he wrote a piece on how to deal with Iran. And part of it specifically included, I just went back and read today, that the U.S. government should provide support and assistance to, he specifically says, the Arabs in Iran and Khuzestan, the Baluchis, and then these different other groups like the Kurds and uh, the different anti-government groups that he's talking about. So. Um, I mean, there is no clear report of who exactly is funding these groups or if they're Iranian or not. But the kind of support that has been mentioning for them is just widespread. And Iran says it will swiftly respond to the, these types of attacks. What can we expect from the Iranian government? What, what, what can they do to stop these types of attacks? Well, the area seems to be, there seems to be a lot of security, the complete security atmosphere in the city of Ahwaz. As it's reported, some people have been arrested. They might be able to um, basically find some of the perpetrators. But this would also mean more repression on the activists, not necessarily armed forces, but any kind of anti-government activists in these areas, in these border areas that already have this kind of tension with the government. There's people in prison, there's people on death rows, and this could just have a negative impact on people who are not necessarily perpetrators or armed mm -hmm. resistant groups to the government. And the global in uh, reaction has been rather interesting. We've heard from Russia, Austria, Turkey, UK, a number of other countries, Spain. Spain. Silence from United States, at least up until I came oh, to the no. set, and Saudi Arabia, and of course Israel. Um, what do you make of that? Why, why the silence? Why not condemn this act of terror? I guess we have to wait and see. It's a weekend for the White House, because last time there was a terrorist attack in Tehran on the parliament, the um, administration, President Trump, finally came out and they uh, condemned it a little later than others. I'm not very sure Saudi Arabia is going to come out and uh, condemn it. When I mentioned some of the Arab Gulf countries, we, uh, let's be specific, specific that Oman, the country mm -hmm. of Oman, did condemn the attack. But um, I guess we'll give the administra the U.S. administration another day and see if they're going to All condemn right. at least the killing of civilians. Right. All right. We'll leave it there. Negar Mortazavi, a sad, tragic day in the city of Ahvaz. Thank, Thank you. you so much.